I don't know if you've ever known what this number is on the bottle. It's not viscosity. 5W30 or the or the desi category number 30. Um, these are all 30s, but there's 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. And then there's a 0W or a W number. These are two uh, separate, actually separate specifications. This is a winter grade, and this is a um, high temperature designation, category designation, um, taken at 212 degrees or 100 degrees C. This is, when you, when they put both of these together, that's a multi-grade. So you've actually graded it two different ways. Now, in a 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60, this, this high temperature number, that number represents viscosity, but it's not viscosity. Um, on a 20, you have a spread or a range of viscosities. Each, each category has its own range of viscosities. The reason why this is important is because in, in the industry, as they're making high, huge, high production, they make hundreds of thousands of gallons at a time, there is no opportunity to, to have a mistake or to re-correct anything. So what they try to do is hit somewhere in the middle of the range so that they're assured that they're going to put something in the bottle that's compliant, that, that, it, that meets that viscosity grade. Whereas Torco, we can make a batch and we can target our viscosity for that particular bottle of oil. So if the 5W30, like for an example, our 5W30 will be um, about 12 centistokes. Now, here's the range. And it'll be, on a 20, it'll be 5.6 to 9.3, 9.3 .3 to 12.5. 12.5 to 16.3 and so on. What this means is, if you were making an oil, and it just so happened to come out at, let's say, 5.8, 5.9, and you put it in the bottle, and it's totally incompliant, that is a 20 weight oil. The next guy made one at 9.3, the the engine would know the difference between that in oil pressure, in film depth, in ring seal, in pro the protection of, at high RPM. Um, so what we do is, Torco does, is we, we target every bottle of product. Like this particular one here, it'll have a target of 12 point, about 12.0 to 12.2 centistokes, which is absolutely the maximum that can be made in that SAE grade. It's almost into the SAE 40 category. But what does that do? Well, it takes longer to shear it. Um, remember that speed, load, and heat are the enemies. Speed, load, and heat. Speed, load, and heat. The very second that you put your foot down on the throttle, speed, load, and heat takes over. That absolutely makes the oil turn to a vapor on the cylinders where the main problem of, of lubrication is. You're lubricating that cylinder with, with no lubricant. Okay, anyway. That's, uh, well, it's something to think about, okay? So anyway, th one of the things that we do is in is tailor make each SAE grade to, to maximize what is allowable for that SAE grade. Now, that doesn't normally happen unless you're able to make batch by batch and come back and re make an adjustment if it doesn't fit in your target range. That's something we do. Now, what is oil? Well, oil is made from base stock, and here, here's something that uh, 
a lot of people don't realize is that there's only a couple refineries in the United States that sell the base stocks to every oil manufacturer. If you don't, that's who you're going to buy the base stock. Now these are base stocks. This is the old style, what was, what was called Group 1. Now in about 19, somewhere around 1990, the industry started using a group number designation for the performance of the base stock. So the lowest performance base stock or the least refined base stock was a Group 1. And then the next <coughs> refining process was a group two, and then there was the next one after that was group three, and that's the end of the refining, and then the creation, the created molecules are group four and group five. The, these base stocks, in the old days, this is all they had, so they would take a, a, a base stock like this, and they would cross blend it with a fairly light, low viscosity base stock like this, and they would cross blend these two to end up with a 30 or a 20 or a 40 or whatever grade they wanted. Now, before about 1945, right during the war, before that time, that was it. Whatever the natural ability to provide lubrication value of the base stock was all you got. That was it. There wasn't any additives. There was nothing that you put into it to build up the viscosity um, or make other behaviors of, of oil. Hey Rob, people might be wondering if they're so close, why do they look so different? The dark and the, the light and the one. This is the old traditional um, refined base stock, which was very poorly refined, didn't go through the hydrogenation process they do today, and so they were dark. Just Matter kind of fact, filtered it. They really didn't do much else, just kind of took the big chunks out. Well, they, they had what they call sol solvent refining. They put it on a distillation tower, and they pull off the different distil distilled feedstocks, mm -hmm. and um, at the bottom would be this, and the next one above that would be a little bit lighter, and the next one above that would be a little lighter and a little lighter. The stuff coming off the top of the tower would be pretty close to this, but it would be very, very low viscosity. But they, once they stripped all those off, then they would recombine them to their particular SAE grade. So this was this is the kind of stuff that your dad and your grandfather and those kind of people would see in clear, when you go to the service station, back in those days, they had clear glass containers and it was sitting out there in racks by the and the attendant would grab a bottle of it and stick it in your engine but it was always dark green and kind of a yellowish greenish hue to it and it poured real slow and it was a 30 <laughs> and they go, oh, I don't know if that stuff's going to work or not.